Hi friends welcome to Emoyi YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed to our channel please subscribe now and also click on the like icon. The word African dress refers to the traditional clothing worn by Africans. Various tribes across the continent take pride in their traditional clothing, which they wear for key festivals and events. There are many various forms of clothes, and the fabric used in the creation of the garment is quite essential. The fabric frequently reflects both the state of society as a whole and the status of individuals or groups within it. In certain circumstances, such as colonial influence or western popular dress code, traditional robes have been superseded or affected by foreign cultures. Tracing the roots of African dress is particularly difficult due to a dearth of written word and true historical facts. Traditional robes passed down through the centuries, oral history, theater, masquerades, and art and artifacts depicting sculptural variations of dress are just a few of the sources. Due to the mild and pleasant climate in most parts of Africa, clothing was not required for warmth or protection, and many tribes wore very little. Women wore wraps around their waists or breasts, and men wore only a loincloth or apron, with scarification and paint ochres adorning the rest of their bodies. For these early forms of clothing, bark fabric, furs, skins, and hides were primarily employed. The bark cloth was simply wrapped around a belt and passed between the legs by men, while women draped it over the belt to hide the front of their body. Raffia was used to stitch strips of bark fabric together and for grass skirts. Bark fabric was created by stripping bark from trees and beating it thin and bendable with the rock from the Stone Age onward. To produce larger portions to cover the body, little pieces were sewed together with skin or raffia. It was sometimes patterned, giving rise to a decorating tradition that can be found in practically every African country. Clothes were adorned with jewelry and headgear made of seashells, bones, ostrich eggshell pieces, and feathers. The oldest evidence of textile manufacturing at Igboyakuya was found in the form of fragments of unpatterned bast fiber cloth dating from the 9th century. Bast is a plant fiber made from the phloem of the inner bark. The telum tunnels in Mali were discovered, showing shards of indigo dyed cotton and wool fabric from the 11th and 12th centuries. Then, around the 15th century, commercial routes between Europe, Africa, and the East were established, allowing for trade in Africa. Exotic things arrived on the continent, and the locals began to covet them for use in the embellishment of their indigenous cloth. Beads, shells, and buttons began to appear on clothes as ornamentation or as part of the garment itself, such as beaded aprons, capes, headbands, and shoes. Different weaving techniques were evolved in various places, some more advanced than others. Cotton, raffia, silk, and wool were employed as fibers. African attire made of woven and decorated fabrics became a representation of the tribe's position, socio-economic standing, culture, surroundings, and climate. Colors and patterns on printed and colored cloth, woven fabric strips, and beaded clothing differentiate one ethnic group from another. Tribes take pleasure in the quality of their hand-woven cloth, which is manufactured using techniques that have been passed down through generations. These garments can be used as wraps and capes or stitched into masculine and female outfits. Some examples of woven and printed cloth are noted below. Yoruba, in Nigeria made Asso Oak and Adiron, indigo resist dyed cloth. Bug and Dot, in Uganda made bark cloth. Asante, in Ghana made Kent cloth and Adinkra cloth A, printed with stencils or stamps. Bambara, in Mali made mud cloth. Masse, in Swahili made Kaitan, A, printed cloth, and Kikoye, woven cloth. Cuba or Showa cloth A, woven raffia cloth. Kaitan fabric has a long history in East and Western Africa, 
but it has recently spread to many other African countries. It's a casual, low-cost printed cloth with a characteristic border design and occasionally political statements placed on it. For National Commemoration Day, Liberian ladies wear Kai Tank costumes portraying the Liberian flag and political leaders. Cotton cloth for everyday use and cloths partly or entirely composed of silk for courtly use, as illustrated opposite, are the two tiers of Ashanti weaving. This is commonly referred to as Kent cloth. Unfortunately, Ashanti weaving is reaching the end of its useful life, since demand for high quality and intricate pattern designs has dwindled. African clothing in the modern era. African clothing, which have their origins in traditional attire, are now worn by millions of individuals for both ceremonial and everyday purposes. Wherever you travel in Africa, this creates a lively and colorful atmosphere. African clothing can range from simple to complicated and can consist of a single item or a fully assembled suit. Kaftans Kaftans, which are now worn by women in Africa, were initially designed for males. In current times, both men and women wear kaftans, which can be as basic as a one-piece robe with a hat or as elaborate as a three-piece ensemble with a hat and scarf. Swahili men wear a kanzu, which is a long, typically white, kaftan with long sleeves. In Central and Western Africa, kaftans are known as babus for men and embabus for women, and are worn by both sexes. A woman's embabu is a long gown that overflows over a wrapper and is ornamented with an ornate headscarf. A babu in Nigerian Yoruba is known as an igbata. This is a long, loose-fitting robe with broad sleeves and a hole in the center for the head to slide through that is worn primarily by Yoruba men. It was paired with a long-sleeved tunic, buba, and long tie-up trousers, sokoto, as well as a matching cap, chechia. Usually, all three pieces of clothing are the same color. Modern African males have adopted the appearance, but have replaced the cloth with something lighter and worn it over a short-sleeved booba. The igbata itself is shorter in length and width, and the pants are tighter fitting, giving it a very tidy and attractive appearance. There are three main types of aso oak, ala arai, sanyan, and etu. Aso oak means top or prestige cloth. The red ones are ala arai, the brown or light brown ones are sanyan, and the dark blue aso oak outfit is etu. Cotton, polyester, rayon, silk, lurex, and acrylic threads are now woven together on small strip looms into long, thin shimmering fabric pieces. They are put together to form the whole cloth, and the sewing and ornamentation, primarily embroidery on the bodice and sleeve ends, allow for even more artistic expression. Ankara, Dutch Wax Ankara or Dutch Wax fabric is frequently used in ensembles. They might be elaborate costumes with hats and scarves, or they can be simple wrappers worn around the waist with a westernized shirt, which are regularly bought from the continent's burgeoning second-hand clothing industry. The wrapper is worn by both men and women throughout Africa, also called Kanga, Futa, Lapa, Kapalana, or Pygni. Ankara is a vivid fabric with a wide range of patterns. These designs are a means of expressing everything from marital status to popular culture, political ideas, and religious values. This tough, lightweight fabric has been quite fashionable in recent years, even making its way into luxury designer labels. Its versatility has allowed it to be used as a base for hats, handbags, shoes, and a variety of other pieces of clothing, as well as home decor. Despite its reputation as the ideal African fabric, Ankara was developed by the Dutch for the Indonesian textile industry before being exported to West Africa. Today, Ghana and Tanzania create domestically made Dutch wax fabric, but Vilisco, based in Holland, is at the top of the heap. Dashiki and Madaba shirts are currently produced in China. Both of these shirts can be dressed up or down based on the fabric used, 
the style of the garment, and the embellishments. A dashiki is a unisex, loose-fitting pullover shirt with an intricate embroidered V-shaped collar that comes in a variety of lengths, colors, and styles. A highly modern twist on a 1960s fashion statement, embracing African ancestry in a sophisticated and distinguished manner. The Madaba shirt was made famous by Nelson Mandela, and while it has its origins in Indonesian wax-resist fabric, it has since been accepted as an African outfit, honoring the ex-South African president's style and elegance.